Today, a litany of great new enhancements to the Wi-Fi standards is in the pipeline. We'll talk mobility enhancements and 802.11ax with Thomas Durham of Broadcom. Join us in just a moment. All right, everybody, welcome back. My name is Klaus Hetting, and I'm the host of Wi-Fi Now TV. And this is the interview program that brings you all the great stories and not least all the great people from across the Wi-Fi industry. And today, we'll be covering a lot of new ground in Wi-Fi technology. And so this is really important, folks, because you need to know what's coming up. And first of all, we'll be talking about mobility enhancements. So to the Wi-Fi standard, meaning things that will improve uh, the Wi-Fi user experience in a big way, and not least open up for a host of new use cases and also, of course, business opportunities. So that's what we're, we'll be covering today at some level of detail. And secondly, we'll also talk about the new 802.11.8x standard, which uh, I personally think is going to be a big positive shift uh, for the Wi-Fi industry because it's going to be a huge enhancement in Wi-Fi quality. We'll get the full story on that in just a second. My guest today, by the way, is Thomas Durham of Broadcom, and we'll get to uh, Thomas in just a moment. So just before that, I want you, uh, I would like you to know that we're taking Wi-Fi Now, the expo and conference to the great city of Washington, D.C. this April 18th to 20th. We were there last year and we had a great time. It was a huge success. So we're going back to BC in just a little less than six weeks time. And uh, this time we'll actually be collecting more Wi-Fi brain power under one roof than we've ever done before. So this is a really good time to uh, check it out and make plans to join us. Uh, and uh, well, if you're in the Wi-Fi industry, this is the one event you're not gonna wanna miss. Also, if you're interested in exhibiting or some other role at Wi-Fi Now DC, you better be quick because we're nearly sold out. For the details, go to wi nowevents.com slash USA. And if you have any questions, drop me a line at klaus at wi nowevents.com. So here's a company that for years has been a Wi-Fi industry driver and not least a source of so much of the cutting edge Wi-Fi technology we see in the market today. This company, of course, is called the Broadcom, and my guest today is Broadcom Principal Scientist. By the way, I love that title. Uh, Thomas Durham. Thomas, welcome to the show. You're live, or not live, but you're coming to us from uh, San Diego, I guess, today. Yeah, that's right. Hi, Klaus, and uh, thank you so much. It's, it's great to be on the show. Well, it's great to have you here, and there's so many things, as we just talked uh, about before the show, there's so many things that we could talk about here and continue to talk about probably for hours on end. Uh, but we, we've got about 20 minutes, and so we'll, we'll, we'll give people the gist of all the great stuff coming up. But before we do that, just give us the you know the one minute introduction to Broadcom. I know Broadcom is famous, but just just give us the the, the brief story here. To, for the okay, people. sure, yeah. So uh, well, Broadcom is one of one of the largest providers of digital and analog uh, semiconductor solutions, basically for for connectivity. Mm -hmm. um, and we're obviously a, we're a leading provider of, of WLAN or, or Wi-Fi solutions that are used over. A, a fairly wide range of devices, smartphones, tablets, uh, laptops, also residential uh, Wi-Fi gateways, enterprise APs, set-top boxes, and the kind of list goes on. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm part of the, the WLAN systems design team, where basically we're, we're working on the development of new technologies to, to create a great user experience across all, all those different usages and, and markets. Great stuff, uh, Thomas. And again, thank you so much for coming on. I've been wanting to do this for such a long time to get into the details of, of, of some of these enhancements. But before we get into that, let's put it maybe a little bit in perspective because I, I know you are uh, very much uh, a fan of, if I may say so, uh, the, the neutral host in the managed services model, as I'm, am I, by the way. So can you explain to us what is meant by that and maybe a little bit more about the business opportunity involved in neutral host and managed Wi-Fi? Sure. So I kind of approach them, I guess, in reverse order. So managed Wi-Fi is basically a, a very broad range of um, deployments of Wi-Fi where some entity is actually in charge of managing those access points. And this could be anything from really large scale hotspot deployments, um, enterprise AP networks, um, but even to, to, you know, to smaller scale um, deployments such as well, 
uh, in, in the home and a residential gateway where the fixed line provider is remotely managing the, the, those APs. And so in, in that sense, th th there's a whole um, gamut of different business models around um, how you know, Wi-Fi is a very flexible technology, so um, how those Wi-Fi networks are being deployed. But the motivation for managing those access points is to make sure you're delivering a great uh, user experience to, to the customer. Mm -hmm. um, reliably, you know, seamless connectivity, all, all these kind of things, great right, coverage and so on. Um, and from a, uh, a, a network perspective, all the aspects around diagnostics and making sure that, that the capacity of the network is at its maximum and so on. Mm -hmm. And then if, if we go specifically into the, the, the neutral host side of things, so I've um, got a, a, probably a, a diagram here. We'll, we'll make these available offline for folks okay. who find it a little bit difficult to see. All right. But, um, what neutral host is about is uh, Wi-Fi that, that is deployed in a, in a venue. So it might be a, you know, a, a conference hall or a uh, um, hotspots outdoors, um, shopping center, wh whatever it is. And um, with neutral host, that physical Wi-Fi infrastructure, so the actual access points or the backhaul, the connectivity, all this kind of thing, is just deployed once. It might be deployed by the by, by the uh, the venue owner or by some other dedicated third party, but and that's what you see here: these kind of access points with the single controller that's managing them. But from the user's point of view, they are seeing um, multiple different networks which correspond to their own service provider. So you know, I could be here and I can see service provider one, service provider two, service provider three. They may be just my service providers giving me internet access or they may be service providers providing specific services um, from their own back ends, which you kind of see you know, all merging into this, this same physical infrastructure. So these are virtual networks on top of one um, physical network. The advantage with this is that um, you don't have all these different service providers trying to put in their own infrastructure, which is obviously very expensive and inconvenient for the venue to do. So you just have one great network once, maximizing the capacity there. But at the same time, each of these service providers has some control over that network so that they can guarantee from an end to end the experience of the service that they're delivering. So if they're delivering a particular you know, video service, for example, they, they can tweak and they can manage that system end to end um, to ensure that um, that quality of service is delivered. And from the user's perspective, they're just seamlessly connected to that network and, and they can go without worrying about the kind of middleman of who actually deployed it. So there's, there's, there's a variety of players in, in that model. Right. I think it's a great model. And uh, although this has been in existence for some time, I mean, on, fr from my side, I seem to be sensing from all the people that I talk to in the Wi-Fi industry that there's an increased amount of interest right now in, well, generally managed Wi-Fi, but specifically for neutral hosts. Would you agree with that, Tom? Yeah, absolutely. And you, you're right that, um, you know, if you go to an airport, for example, you can go into a, a kind of captive portal and uh, select from, you know, different roaming providers, whatever is your operator and get connected that way. What we're really trying to do at the moment with, with technologies such as Passpoint, you know, which has been out for a little while, but now is really ramping up in terms of deployments, is to make that experience better. So it's basically one touch in your ear, or you provision your um, profile for that network already, and you're just seamlessly connecting and getting onto, onto the network, together with all the enhancements and connectivity, you know, to make that, that uh, yes. user experience as good as possible. Thomas, let's talk a little, a little bit about exactly that, the, the, the mobility enhancements, which is a, something that interests me a great deal. And, and finally, on this show, we can now, at, to some extent at least, get to the bottom of, of all these enhancement uh, pieces of the 802.11 uh, standard. And I, I don't know if you want to do them in order, and I do apologize, well, if, to the viewers, not to you, for the alphabet soup involved, but what we're talking about is Dot 11 AI, I know that one a little bit, is also called FILS or FILS. Then there's dot 11 K slash V, which are supposed, I, I suppose are two separate enhancements. And then dot 11 R. And, and we do, while why you talk about that, by the way, we're going to put up a, uh, a picture uh, that uh, explains a little bit about it so that our viewers can watch that. But uh, would you care to, to tell us more about those? Sure, we'll try to avoid the alphabet soup. So hopefully on, on the picture, you, you, you'll be able to see um, a Wi-Fi network with three different access points. So they are, you know, different, if you like, different cells. So this is an extended hotspot network. And you've got a user in the middle who is moving in mobility through that network. Now, there may also be other Wi-Fi networks there. They may also have a cellular network they can connect to, you know. So 
what we're trying to do is to make sure that as that user is in mobility through that environment, that they're always staying connected to whatever is the best access point, whatever is the best network for them um, at that time. And in doing so, we're also making maximal use of all the spectrum that we've got out there because Wi-Fi operates on multiple bands. So we want to make sure that you know those, de those devices are balanced across all those bands so that the user experience that, that the user gets uh, is as good as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, to make all this work, th there's basically three stages. Um, the, the first from the device perspective is as it's moving through that environment, it needs to know what are those access points, what are those networks that are out there, it needs to discover them. Because if it hasn't discovered them, it cannot, not it or no one else can decide that, that it's going to actually roam between them um, as it needs to. So the, there's some capabilities, you know, we talked about the alphabet soup, <laughs> some which exist have been in the standard a little while, some which are just you know, sort of in the, the newest version of the standard. Um, such as uh, so 11 AI fills discovery and reduce neighbor report. This is basically as the device starts to scan for those networks, other APs are providing information about what else is out there. So that basically the device is finding out about the entirety of that connectivity, of all those connectivity options um, as quickly and efficiently and power efficiently as it can. Then, so that's the kind of first step. Then, mm -hmm. then the second step is around the triggering and um, when a decision to roam, in other words, the device is going to swap from one access point or network to another, when that decision is going to be made. And within there, there are kind of two flavors. There's one we call network assisted steering, which is a kind of analog of how things work in the cellular world. So we're having kind of cellular class roaming here. So 11 kV, the device is reporting back what it sees and then the intelligence algorithms inside the network um, are making decisions and um, steering that device from one AP to another or one, one network to another, one band to another. And then alongside that, we've also got um, what we call client steering. So this is basically where um, the, the, the device by itself um, is able to make decisions about which AP or network is best for it. And to do that, it relies on some metrics which the different access points are broadcasting out which will allow it to basically calculate what is the highest quality link I would get. I can look at all those APs that are out there and based on that I can decide. And so depending on the, the, the details of how the roam is happening, if it's within a very strongly managed network or it's between networks and so on, um, either of those technologies uh, can be used. But put together, they're a kind of complete roaming solution as, as the device is making those decisions as it moves through that environment. Then the third step is having decided to roam I need to actually make that connection, make that swap as quickly as I can so that I'm not losing connectivity you know, while I'm swapping from one access point or network to another. Mm -hmm. And that's where the sort of 11R fast BSS transition and the 11AI fills authentication come in, are optimizing that process of authenticating the device to the next access point, doing all the stuff it needs to actually set up you know, IP connection so that from the user's perspective, those roams happen seamlessly and the user just sees that their connectivity carries on you know, in the background with as high throughput as it can. So, so there's really a lot of stuff going on here and it's, it's fascinating to hear your explanation because I, this is really bringing, uh, would you say, you know, proper mobility functions into the Wi-Fi world or is it? And, and we've not really had that before. Is that correctly understood? Right, so we, we've, parts of these solutions have been deployed in a kind of proprietary way for, for a while. And, you know, we've seen them in enterprise networks, uh, for example. What we're kind of adding in here and what also Wi-Fi Alliance is bringing with some certifications in, in this area coming up pretty soon um, is that kind of, um, you know, broader deployment of all of these features and um, a, a more dependability and more flexibility in the way that they're deployed and the types of roaming that, that can be done. So yeah, going, going forward, very much expecting this to become the norm, you know, that um, devices mm -hmm. as they move through these networks are gonna, gonna have a great experience in, in all cases and when they're moving between different networks as well. Right, so there's, there's a whole range of improvements if you look at it from, from what the user will experience given that, of course, that all this is in place. We're talking about getting on Wi-Fi networks much faster and then uh, maintaining a much higher quality of service, essentially, when you're on there. I mean, that, that will be, you know, presumably a big improvement, uh, you know, and that everybody will be able to experience if all this is in, in, pla is in place. Would you agree with that? 
Yeah, it, exactly. You know, these are the kind of most fundamental aspects of uh, Wi-Fi works great. A lot, you know, most of the time, people go into a certain environments where they're, they're in these kind of complicated deployments and occasionally you know, things go wrong. And so this is adding in those, the, those features in an interoperable way, which are, which are going to, uh, we, we strongly feel are going to make those experiences much better in us. Right. And so, for example, if you look at these features, I'm talking now specifically about the mobility enhancement features, uh, in the context of uh, what Wi-Fi service providers are doing or what managed service Wi-Fi service providers, if you can call it that, are doing, there's a lot of value to be had in this, uh, I should think, specifically from, from, from a service provider point of view. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, particularly the features which are around, you know, sort of, um, if I'm deploying a network and I'm managing it somehow, I've got controllers or cloud controllers or whatever they are. These are providing me new features, mm -hmm. um, new ways that I can that I can optimally manage my network and the users that, that, that are working within them. So I think a lot, a lot of operators are pretty keen that they're already deploying some of these technologies. And, you know, as we see that greater rollout of support across the whole ecosystem, the, the, the value just goes up and up from the existing. Well, that's beautiful. That's music to my ears. I think it's going to really do a lot and in, in, in for the quality and for, for all the users out there, absolutely. When can we expect uh, these improvements to hit the markets? And I suppose it's both a question of having this ready on the infrastructure side, of course, but also in, in, uh, in, in handsets and, and PCs and what other types of devices are out there. Right. So some, some of these features exist now. In fact, they're, they're already deployed in some devices and enterprise uh, access points today. Some are in, in, in the process, or I would say, of, uh, of coming to market at the moment. So in terms of the, the sort of certification side, the, the Wi-Fi Alliance side of things, uh, I think that you're going to hear some, some news from them pretty soon. The, the, the good thing about this whole story as a whole piece is that fundamentally it's a, it's a kind of software solution mm -hmm. so um we're, we're not reliant necessarily on you know having new chipsets and whatever these are enhancements that the whole ecosystem can, can bring into devices and eps relatively rapidly so you're right so the, exactly so we can expect uh this to evolve fairly quickly out there uh, given you know that people actually want to go out and, and software upgrade they're both on the network side and the device side it, exactly. That, that's what we're expecting. The, I think there's a there's a pent up demand for uh, these really interoperable solutions and these mm -hmm. added features that, that we're bringing through the combination of these programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're we're expecting as soon as they're mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, they're mature and released. And I think it's a very short term mm -hmm. story that uh, that they're, they're going to get into in, into customers' hands really, really fast. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thomas, the last thing I want to talk to you a little bit about on this show, and it's probably the subject of multiple shows, and it will be the subject of multiple programs from the Wi-Fi Now TV side, I think for the next year, because we'll be covering this a lot, is of course 802.11ax, which is the new Wi-Fi standard, and it's not uh, finalized yet, of course, but, uh, you, you, and please give us a status on maybe the standardization as well. There are companies already pushing it. And there's a host of uh, new things that are going on with that standard and a huge number of improvements. I've been studying it a little bit superficially. Tell us what to expect from AX and maybe give us an idea of, you know, the timelines and so on. Okay. So, yeah, so 11AX for folks who, uh, who don't know is kind of the next generation of, of Wi-Fi. So it's basically new, new chipsets, which are, mm -hmm. which are going to be coming out. Um, uh, you know, I think from the service provider perspective, 11ax and these other enhancements we've talked about on the, on the show today are really kind of uh, augmenting each other and we're really convinced that the, the story from the combination of that set of features is uh, mm -hmm. is really strong i think i think it's a great story there mm -hmm. um the, the standard itself is progressing very well inside uh, ieee mm -hmm. um i think all, all the main features are basically defined there wi-fi alliance is working on the certification aspects right now mm -hmm. um in terms of the, you know, what the user is going to see at the end and what, what these uh, operators are going to see, the, the, there's a whole slew of enhancements. And uh, I, we, as you say, we could spend a lot of time talking about them, but I, 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 just to na name a few, I, I think one enhancement which um, users will see every day, no matter what type of network they're connected to, uh, are the improvements in the coverage and, and the range that, that, that come from AX. So basically we have some technology called OFDMA, uh, which allows 
mobile devices, which are power constrained, um, to focus their energy into a, a narrower part of the spectrum to deliver um, signal to the access point, even when they're further away. So just like in the cellular world, there's that the access points are transmitting a higher power than the devices can in, in many cases. So we, we, AX is allowing us to make up that balance. And as a result of which, we're really going to get some, some quite impressive, I think, improvements in the, in the coverage, which is something that you'll just experience where you had Wi-Fi that wasn't working so well at the edge of coverage before, even at home. Now it's going to work a lot better, we, we, we think. Mm. Then there's all the, the sort of enhancements of AX, um, which are around managed type networks. So we have, as usual, um, substantial improvements in, in the throughput and the, the basic capacity of the network. But probably the, the, the biggest gains are in these sorts of um, you know, hotspot type or conference venue type networks where there's, where there's a large number of users. And in AX, what it's allowing is the access point um, to take some responsibility for scheduling the, those users rather than having them all contend to, to transmit um, uh, w w with each other. And by um, encapsulating some of that, that scheduling responsibility inside the access point, um, you, you end up using the, the, the spectrum much more, much more efficiently and the, the throughput really goes up as a result. So you know, people may have experienced in the past, you go to, a, you go to a really dense environment, there's like thousands of users there and it can, can be sometimes problematic to, uh, to, 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 get, to get a really good connection. This is, you're going to see a big improvement from 11AX in, the, in that context. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess what one, one other aspect I, I, I would mention is um, around what we call spatial reuse, which is basically um, where you've got access points and cells which are neighboring each other, um, allowing more flexibility and more optimal use of um, when, those, when those different cells, if you like, when those different networks um, back off compared to each other and when they're allowed to transmit simultaneously. So if the interference they cause is managed, we can we have a way to, in, to manage that interference, we can actually get a lot better um, overall throughput capacity of the network by allowing those networks to work to, to transmit simultaneously uh, alongside each other. So when you put all those capabilities together, there's, it's a really big, I think, benefit for those money. It is a huge change and, and, and obviously a huge improvement nearly in every category uh, that I can think of. And I'm so happy that you're here to tell us about it. And we're going to have to dig deeper into it. I, I, I can't wait to try it personally myself. And uh, if you know of a place where I can, I'll come <laughs> down. If you have it in San Diego, I'll come down and see it. And I want to try okay. it. <laughs> but... Um, Thomas, I, I did want to specifically ask you about one thing, and you don't have to answer if you don't have a, uh, you don't have the number. But do you do you have a, uh, uh, you know can you quantify what you think might be the coverage improvement, or is that just too hard uh, to put a number on? We have figures. Obviously, it, it when we look at the improvement, you know, in a kind of technical sense, in dBs, yes. Yes. Um, what it what it means in terms of the actual range difference from the access point depends on whether it's a kind of line of sight, like an out outdoor environment where there's no obstacles or whether there's walls and uh, yes. different obstacles right. in between. So the figure yeah. you get is kind of different. So I, I'm not sure I want to put an exact number on it, but I, I would say that it's large enough that, um, you, you know, you would see a very substantial improvement in a in AX network. It's not a kind of marginal change. Okay. There's a lot of people who uh, are going to be uh, very happy about that answer, I can promise you. So we're excited about it. That's really good stuff. Thomas, I want to thank you for coming on. You did a great job in explaining all these things, and we'll bring you back definitely for sure because there's so much more we have to talk about. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas Durham, uh, Principal Scientist of Broadcom, and uh, come back and see us again, Thomas. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, everybody, that's it for this week's show. Big thanks to Thomas uh, from Broadcom uh, for joining us. So in the coming weeks, I just have to tell you that we'll be interviewing a ton of Wi-Fi companies, including, uh, I'm just going to mention a few, Coda Cloud, Signal Forest, Mojo Networks. Uh, Mr. William Webb will be back on the show talking about uh, the new Wi-Fi line study on uh, Wi-Fi spectrum needs. Also be talking to Open Mesh and TV Whitespace leader Adaption. Uh, for the first time, we'll have TV Whitespace covered on the show. That's all coming up in the next month. So uh, please check back with us again. Tune in again next time. And thank you for watching.
Wi-Fi Now is a production of RCR TV News. To suggest a show topic or to learn more about Wi-Fi Now events, you can reach Klaus Heading at klaus at headingconsulting.com. To find out more about Wi-Fi Now and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com. Thank you.